them and also win. Imbalance and climate too, carelessness and assault, with karma result as the aid. Uh, so here, uh, you can see uh, that when we uh, suffer, uh, that means uh, our body suffers, uh, there are eight uh, reasons. Uh, one is bile disorder, another one is phlegm, another one because of wind, and then the fourth is because of uh, imbalance of the tree, that means imbalance of the bile, phlegm, and the wind. And then the fifth is because of climate change, six is because of our carelessness, uh, seven because of chance external happenings, mm. and then the eight is because of karma. Uh, so not everything is due to karma. Mm. The next sutta, 36.22, monks. I will teach you a Dhamma exposition on the theme of 108. Listen to that. And what monks is the Dhamma exposition on the theme of the 108? I have spoken of two kinds of feelings by one method of exposition. I have spoken of three kinds of feelings by another method of exposition. I have spoken of five kinds of feelings, six kinds of feelings, 18 kinds, 36 kinds, and I have spoken of 108 kinds of feelings. And what monks are the two kinds of feelings, bodily and mental? These are called the two kinds of feelings. And what monks are the three kinds of feelings, pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neither painful nor pleasant feeling? These are the three kinds of feelings. And what monks are the five kinds of feelings, the pleasure faculty, the pain faculty, the joy faculty, the displeasure faculty, the equanimity faculty, these are called the five kinds of feelings. And what monks are the six kinds of feelings? Feeling eye of, feeling born of eye contact, feeling born of ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact. These are called the six kinds of feeling. And what monks are the 18 kinds of feelings? Six examinations accompanied by joy, six examinations accompanied by displeasure, six examinations accompanied by equanimity. These are called the 18 kinds of feeling. How do you get the six? Huh? Is it must be the six sense at the six sense doors? Huh? Six sense doors. Uh, six sense jo- six at uh, the six sense doors. Huh? If you experience joy, yeah, there are six kinds of feelings. Yeah. And if you experience displeasure, yeah, there is another six kinds of feelings yeah, uh, because of the different uh, bases. Yeah. And then the equanimity. Yeah. Uh, so six times three, yeah. okay, 18. And what monks are the 36 kinds of feelings? Six types of joy based on the household life. Six types of joy based on renunciation. Six types of displeasure based on the household life. Six types of displeasure based on renunciation. Six types of equanimity based on the household life. Six types of equanimity based on renunciation. These are called the 36 kinds of feelings. And what monks are the 108 kinds of feelings? The above 36 feelings in the past, the above 36 feelings in the future, the above 36 feelings at present. These are called the 108 kinds of feelings. This monks is the Dhamma exposition on the theme of the 108. The first two are two kinds of body feelings, body and mental. Body feelings originate from the body. That means you, 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 you cut your, your finger or something, so you have a bodily feeling. And then uh, mental feeling uh, comes from the mind. So, for example, if you suffer bodily pain, uh, and then uh, you start thinking about it, uh, and then the more you think, uh, the more you have mental suffering. Uh, so, uh, the mental suffering comes from the mind. Uh, and the three kinds of feeling uh, is uh, this way you understand. The five kinds of feeling, uh, two 
the pain and the pleasure uh, from the uh, body, pain and pleasure from the mind, and then the equanimity uh, feeling. Mm. Okay, I think it's enough about that sutta. The next sutta is 36.23. Then a certain monk approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Venerable Sir, what now is feeling? What is the origin of feeling? What is the way leading to the origination of feeling? What is the cessation of feeling? What is the way leading to the cessation of feeling? What is the gratification in feeling? What is the danger? What is the escape? And the Buddha said, There are among these three feelings, pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neither painful nor pleasant feeling. This is called feeling. With the arising of contact, there is the arising of feeling. That means arising of contact at the sixth sense basis. Eh? There is the arising of feeling. Craving is the way leading to the origination of feeling. Why is craving the way leading to the origination of feeling? Because feeling comes from the body. And the body comes from craving. Right? Uh, because of craving, uh, we have rebirth. Uh, we have rebirth, uh, the rounds of rebirth. So, uh, that's why craving is the way leading to the origination of feeling. With the cessation of contact, there is the cessation of feeling. This noble eightfold path is the way leading to the cessation of feeling, that is, right view, right thoughts, etc. The pleasure and joy that arise in dependence on feeling, this is the gratification in feeling. That feeling is impermanent, suffering, and subject to change, this is the danger in feeling. The removal and abandonment of desire and lust of feeling, this is the escape from feeling. Mm. That's the end of the sutta. So here you see, eh? It's a very concise explanation of feeling. Uh, the feeling arises from contact at the sixth sense basis, and then uh, the origination of feeling. Uh, or feeling comes from the body, and the body comes from craving uh, that produces the round of rebirths. Uh, that's why craving is said to be the origination of feeling. Uh. And then when there's no contact, there's no feeling. Uh, and the Noble Eightfold Path uh, is the way leading to the permanent cessation of healing. Mm. Okay. The next sutta is 36.31. Monks, there is carnal delight. This, uh, here they say rapture, the word is piti. Piti, I uh, like to translate as delight. Uh, there is spiritual delight. There is delight more spiritual than the spiritual. There is carnal happiness, sukha. There is spiritual happiness. And there is happiness more spiritual than the spiritual. There is carnal equanimity, upeka. There is spiritual equanimity. And there is equanimity more spiritual than the spiritual. There is carnal deliverance or liberation or release. Uh, the uh, Pali word is vimoka. There is spiritual release. There is release more spiritual than the spiritual. And what monks is carnal delight? There are monks. These five cords of sensual pleasure. What five? Forms cognizable by the eye that are lovely, enticing, etc. And then uh, sounds, smells, taste, touch uh, that are uh, desirable, lovely, agreeable, pleasing, sensually enticing, tantalizing. Uh, these are the five cords of sensual pleasure. The delight that arises in dependence on these five cords of sensual pleasure, this is called carnal delight. And what, i uh, stop you for a moment. Uh, this uh, delight, uh, uh, piti uh, is not supposed to be a feeling. Feeling is uh, happiness, uh, the pleasure and displeasure and equanimity. Uh. But uh, this piti uh, is not exactly a uh, feeling. Exactly what it is, uh, it's very hard to 
to see lah, because our mind uh, consists of many constituents uh, in the mind. Uh, so like feeling, perception, volition, and all that, all part of the mind. So this delight uh, is, uh, is, is um, not defined under Vedana, uh, not defined under feeling. Mm. What monks is spiritual delight. Here secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, a monk enters and dwells in the first jhana, which is accompanied by thought directed and sustained, with delight and happiness born of seclusion. With the subsiding and thought directed and sustained, he dwells, he enters and dwells in the second jhana, which has internal confidence and unification of mind, is without thought directed and sustained, and has delight and happiness born of concentration. This is called spiritual delight. So here, spiritual delight nah, consists of the first jhana and the second jhana. Nah. And what monks is the delight nah, more spiritual than the spiritual. When a monk whose asavas are destroyed reviews his mind liberated from lust, liberated from hatred, liberated from delusion, there arises delight. This is called delight more spiritual than the spiritual. Uh, so here you can understand uh, what is this delight. Uh, delight is just, I mean, to, 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 to the layman, uh, delight is just a feeling. Uh, but somehow in the Buddha's uh, definition, uh, doesn't seem to, uh, feeling does not seem to include delight. Uh. Mm. And what monks is carnal happiness? There are monks, these five causes of sensual pleasure, what five forms? Uh, sounds, smells, tastes, and touch uh, that are desirable, lovely, agreeable, pleasing, sensually enticing, tantalizing. The happiness that arises in dependence on these five causes of sensual pleasure, this is called carnal happiness. And what monks is spiritual happiness? Here monks, secluded from sensual pleasures, a monk enters and dwells in the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, this is called spiritual happiness. Uh, so spiritual happiness uh, goes up from the first jhana to the third jhana. And what monks is happiness more spiritual than the spiritual? When a monk whose asavas are destroyed reveals his mind liberated from lust, liberated from hatred, liberated from delusion, there arises happiness. This is called happiness more spiritual than the spiritual. So you can see uh, the difference maybe, uh, it's a shade of difference uh, between delight and happiness. Uh. So in the case of this Arahan, uh, who has just become liberated, uh, then when he reviews, uh, um, reviews his, his, his mind having become liberated, uh, uh, you can imagine uh, probably first he has delight uh, and then uh, after that is followed by happiness. Uh. Mm. And what monks is carnal equanimity, upeka. There are monks, these five causes of sensual pleasure. What five? Form, sound, smell, taste, touch. Uh, that are desirable, lovely, agreeable, pleasing, etc. These are the five causes of sensual pleasure. The equanimity that arises in dependence on these five causes of sensual pleasure. This is called carnal equanimity. For example, uh, you are uh, on a very hot day, uh, you are bothered by the heat uh, and the uh, dampness. Uh, and then you enter a room uh, which is aircon, temperature is just right. Uh, and then when you stay in there, uh, then uh, your, all your disturbed feelings uh, all subside uh, and then you feel equanimity. equanimity. Mm. And what monks is spiritual equanimity. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, and, the, and with the previous passing away of joy and displeasure, a monk enters and dwells in the fourth jhana, which is neither painful nor pleasant, and includes the, the utter uh, purification of sati and equanimity. And what monks is equanimity more Uh, so here, this uh, fourth jhana, there is uh, utter purification of mindfulness and equanimity. Uh, that type of equanimity uh, in the fourth jhana is called the spiritual equanimity. Uh.